Um, so as a last one in a row, I, I try to keep it um, short and uh, as audiovisual as possible. Um, so we are glad to introduce you um, the project of um, documenting um, Estonian daguerreotypes and using reflectance transformation imaging in their investigation. Uh, so first I'm going to uh, talk about um, the project, uh, its aims and reasons why we chose um, RTI as an imaging technology. And then Andres is going to continue with the um, uh, technology uh, itself. Um, the Gerotype was the first more widely spread and uh, commercially successful photographic process um, uh, in the history of photography. Uh, it was introduced in Paris in 1839 and uh, it was a total hit um, in the whole world actually uh, until 1850s and 60s in some locations. Um, basic, um, mainly because of the uh, because it gives uh, the op opportunity to uh, capture uh, um, the, the real nature. Um, here you can see some examples from uh, Estonian collections, um, either uh, from in institutions or private collections. So the daguerreotype is a unique image on a silvered copper plate, uh, which is usually represented in a frame, as you can see here. Um, or a case like here. Uh, this is like American style daguerreotype. It is actually quite small, uh, uh, like 10 by 8. Um, and it is always covered with a protective cover glass, um, as you can also see here. Mm, so we are dealing with one of the most uh, revolutionary invention in the history of photography and on the other hand uh, with the newest technology which we can uh, use to preserve the image and investigate the, the, the photographic process more deeply now almost uh, 180 years after its invention. Um, the, the, the Gerotype documentation project uh, was initiated by the non-profit organization uh, Estonian Photographic Heritage uh, Society and it was uh, financially supported by the Estonian Minister of Culture. Uh, the first thing that we did was the historical research uh, based on uh, um, local newspapers from 1840s and 50s um, and other publications. Um, once we um, uh, were able to locate the daguerreotypes in um, um, institutions, uh, we did technical documentation and condition report as well as uh, RTI on site because uh, most of the daguerreotypes were in uh, poor condition and uh, the, the transportation wasn't allowed. Um, so, uh, finally, we inserted all the data into the daguerreobase, which is um, a database uh, which gathers information about um, European daguerreotypes. Uh, as a result, we found 29 daguerreotypes, uh, 23 of them uh, from the institutions, libraries, archives and museums and uh, six from uh, private collections. There are more probably uh, in the private collections, but we were focused on mainly on uh, institutional uh, daguerreotypes. Um, so here's the daguerreobase. Uh, uh, if you search, uh, if you um, uh, type Estonia into the search field, then, then you will find all, all of them in the database as well. Uh, so why uh, we chose um, RTI? Um, the main goal was, of course, to make these uh, images accessible online. But uh, the main reason why we chose RTI uh, particularly was the fragility of the object and the desire to capture as much information as we can get. Uh, if you have seen the daguerreotype, you might have noticed that uh, 
um, you need to hold it in your hand um, in a uh, right angle and right uh, light condition uh, so you could actually see the image. But uh, with the help of RTI, we uh, can do that digitally. We can change the light condition. So you don't need to um, um, handle the object it itself. Um, the use of RTI also provides conservators with a new approach um, in gathering additional information about uh, the process itself, technical information like hallmarks, uh, polishing lines, hand coloring, etc., and about the condition report, like scratches, dust, um, and other uh, deteriorations. So uh, what I like the most uh, is that you are able to uh, investigate the flatness of the plate itself without um, opening the frame. Uh, RTI therefore makes condition recording more accurate and can prevent uh, damages caused by handling the original object. Uh, what might happen if you if you open the frame? Uh, here is an example. Um, if the, the housing is missing, um, and uh, this is the, on the left side, you, you see uh, the reproduction from uh, 1970s, um, and uh, the frame is still missing, and it was uh, it hasn't um, got um, the conservation housing as well. So uh, the condition at the moment is on the right, so you can't see any image anymore. Um, another example uh, on um, uh, Taranish. Um, RTI also uh, allows to zoom in and see the details, uh, like here, uh, the retouching uh, on the finger, on, on the ring or the scratches of the cover glass and the plate uh, itself. Uh, one example of the advantage of RTI um, can also be seen here in the polishing lines that run parallel across the surface of the silvered copper plate, uh, which you can see uh, more clearly on the left. Um, and they are only visible uh, under raking light uh, with the addition of RTI visualization, the 3D nature of the object is um, exaggerated and uh, it enables a uh, conservator to inspect the surface uh, of the plate more closely. So in this case, we used uh, a feature called uh, specular enhancement uh, in order to see the polishing lines more clearly uh, on the left. Then. Uh, and here also you can see the 3D nature of the object, which you cannot uh, see that closely without um, uh, RTI, without changing the light conditions. Another example, um, the scratches um, become visible uh, with the help of RTI. You can also um, uh, inspect um, the small details in the corners. Uh, here you can see the, the number 30. Uh, this is a hallmark uh, which consists of symbols and numbers. Um, this means the, the ratio of silver to copper. So the 30 is basically the, the thickness of the silver layer. Uh, and here 40 in the corner. So now Andres is going to uh, describe the technology more deeply. Hi people, me again. <clears throat> there are uh, several uh, problems when capturing uh, daguerreotypes. Daguerreotypes are reflective in uh, nature and are more likely to record reflections of uh, ambient light that uh, normally review, removed during the capture process itself. The addition of protective glass covering, uh, which can include scratches and dust, makes the recording process much more difficult due to the addition of further 
reflective uh, qualities as well as unwanted uh, shadowing. As the surface uh, detail is reflective, extra care must be given during the recording pro procedure to verify no external uh, light source, such ceiling lights or exit lights, uh, other than the one it tended uh, to be there, is captured within the data. Removing as much as ambient light as possible prevents the processing software uh, from including unwanted material uh, in the final RTI file. The inclusion of these extra reflective uh, features may produce an erroneous uh, data in the uh, final results and uh, could invalidate uh, any uh, interpretations uh, afterwards. Together, valuable uh, uh, image data for research, the RTI is very useful solution. RTI is computational uh, photography method and it relies uh, on an image-based representation of an object surface color and shape achieved by applying uh, and capturing the object on the lighting from uh, different uh, directions, angles. The method allows to record uh, actually 3D surface uh, properties and visualize interactively the surface of an artifact as a 2D interactive images. An ordinary photographic camera and a detached light source, like a flash bulb, uh, are necessary for taking uh, these pictures. The only demand uh, for camera and the uh, light source is that they can be operated manually or in manual mode. Modern obsidian uh, knap point, as an example, uh, here we can see uh, 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 original uh, photograph, uh, then a static uh, RTI uh, in uh, the same thing in specular uh, enhancement mode, uh, then a multi-light mode and no normal visualization mode where we can see the normal vectors as well and enhanced, enhanced uh, normals. So uh, there are also other possibilities, but uh, these uh, are usually the main uh, which are in use. The RTI method is based on a mathematical algorithm that calculates uh, the reflection of light from the surface for every pixel and given series of uh, images or set of images. It was created by Tom uh, Malspender of the Hewitt Packard Laboratory 2001. Uh, there are now other algorithms such as hemispherical harmonics in addition to PTM which was created by Malspender and uh, these are varying uh, uh, possibilities to these examinations. So if we know uh, the light position, we know which direction actually the uh, pixel is facing. For example, the su surface cross here, and if we are looking it on 2D, then uh, we are able to calculate uh, the angles. In the result, uh, RTI model is uh, a way uh, the lighting direction can be changed interactively and enhancements can be performed to make surface details more visible. The method is very cost effective and accessible as no special and expensive uh, equipment is necessary. And uh, software for processing and uh, for viewing is uh, free of charge. It's uh, freeware, actually. About settings, such as focus, aperture, shutter speed, 
they should be adjusted manually. A length of string and billiard ball or snooker ball uh, are important pieces of uh, equipment. The string ensures the constant uh, distance between the light source and uh, the object uh, that is being photographed. And the uh, snooker ball <laughs> stores the direction of the light uh, and uh, uh, there are reflections for the light sources uh, from different angles. Usually there are uh, 30 to 70 photographs per item uh, and uh, this is an optimal amount of uh, photographs which uh, software can be process processed and uh, in the end of result as a uh, will be interactive photograph that uh, allows uh, to uh, see and check the uh, different light angles how how the uh, item is viewable here are different uh, equipment uh, which in different uh, institutions have been uh, uh, invented or uh, uh, tested uh, like motorized lighting system in Southampton University, uh, RTI uh, imaging allows also uh, to use uh, uh, very, very strong uh, light, light uh, 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 sources uh, even uh, during the daylight. Uh, this is uh, RTI imaging. Uh, in uh, Libya desert, uh, where, where uh, archaeologists uh, capturing rock art, the, there are uh, several uh, solutions uh, for microscope and uh, uh, different uh, solutions uh, to take uh, pictures about items. Here we can see some uh, LED, uh, LED uh, light. Uh, uh, positions and uh, we need uh, uh, some uh, uh, ordinary camera actually for that. RTI is used in several fields and uh, can be used in different uh, research uh, projects as well in different domains. Uh, one is a uh, uh, def definitely uh, uh, archaeology, but also as well uh, forensic uh, investigation and so on. Uh, changing uh, the uh, interactively the light angle, we are able to see details and other characteristics of the item. Special filter set, uh, this uh, specular enhancement, uh, which uh, Kadi was mentioning before, enables to remove color uh, and uh, there can be viewable the third uh, dimension as well. All the scratches, possible brush strokes, polishings can be identified. Using filter uh, normal visualization, we, we are able to see visualization where every pixel is uh, looking. Uh, it's uh, kind of uh, uh, usual uh, viewer we are, we are seeing at the moment here. Uh, but, uh, and normal visualization as well. But uh, during this project, uh, we were in contact with uh, one uh, uh, Canadian-based uh, uh, mathematician to get uh, out of uh, RTI view a little bit more. And in case of daguerreotype research, there are a couple of additions and changes uh, which uh, uh, Stefan Hogarth uh, was able to uh, make. And uh, this viewer is actually uh, publicly available through the Bitbucket. Hello? Uh, 
Further to the usual rendering modes uh, used within uh, RTA examinations, in addition, algorithm which we were using during this project uh, was used to extend uh, the normal visualizations by adding magnification factor to each uh, of the color assigned to the surface normal vector components. Uh, this allowed for the data to be amplified and, uh, and it enables uh, small changes in the position of the surface normal vectors across the whole image to be viewed as uh, an additional feature using this process. The curve profiles across the image uh, can be extracted, therefore providing a valuable uh, tool in understanding the flatness of the daguerreotypes below the glass covering. It's much, much easier than usually. Uh, if daguerreotype contains feature, features that uh, have a surface normal deflection, that are very small in comparison to the curve profile, uh, the magnification of the curve, curve profile uh, will uh, um, unfortunately obscure any identification of these features. To compensate uh, for this, a mathematical projection which digitally removes the curve profile can be applied whilst at the same time leaving the feature analysis so that, that we are keeping the data, but uh, we are removing the uh, projection, uh, which uh, curve profile projection. For each uh, pixel calculations uh, for local average surface normal for that point, uh, based on the surface normals with a overall given radius are produced. These uh, results are uh, then projected by adjusting the pixel surface normal by correction factor obtained uh, uh, from comparing the calculated uh, local average normal with a given axis, value of given axis. As a daguerreotypes are reasonably flat uh, with uh, fine features, uh, magnifying the surface normals brings out the highest resolution which is uh, possible. So that's that's it from us. Thank you.